In this video, we're going to give you a little bit of update on Marianne's status, health-wise. And why we haven't been at the Cove. And why we haven't had Cove videos. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we haven't been out at the Cove, so we don't have any content to share with you just yet. Yeah, it's been about a week and a half since we've been there at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, haven't been able to... I had one day where I went and picked something up to take over there and oh, shuffle right. some stuff around, but I didn't stay very long. Um, there was a sale of something that we wanted to buy, but... Eventually, before snow flies, we'll have a video of that and a couple other projects I have to do. But uh, this past week's been a little challenging. Yeah, the last week and a half has yeah. been uh, the worst for me out of this whole experience. Yeah. So, um, we're doing this video. Uh, it's part of the cove. Marianne's part of the cove. But, mainly but we're not we have doing a, it from the cove today. Right, we're doing it from our house. But we have a lot of friends and family... Uh, across the country that's been following along with the Cove and Mary Ann's health updates and things like that. So we thought we'd do an update video. Get everyone up to speed. Plus uh, there's no content to show you, so... Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, if you don't know what's going on and you found us on this video, I'll have a link in the description and up above and all over to kind of explain what's going on uh, health-wise with... Uh, with Mary Ann, so you go back and watch and then come back to this one. Um, but let's get back to it. So we're going to title this one uh, First Round Check. Um, Mary Ann has to have five more rounds of chemo. As of now. As it, of now. It may change. It may add because of what happened at the first round. Yeah, we'll talk about that. A little bit here. I'm going to let you talk about okay. that. Um, but I just want to mention, like, the, the Project Donley Cove, husband and wife, older, working together uh, to create a private retreat, major project uh, for the summer of 2023. And, um, you know, this is our life. So, um, my roles have changed quite drastically. I'm now the water boy and Uber driver. <laughs> uh, we've been to a lot of medical facilities, especially over the past week. Yeah, we were counting. I think I'm up to five doctors now. <sighs> yeah, but as a husband, uh, my role has been to take care of my wife. And he's um, done a wonderful job. So, you know, household duties. Um, I'm still trying to keep up with work and things of that nature, but my number one priority right now is making sure my wife is comfortable and getting through this so she could get healthy and we could get back to the cove. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, uh, you know, if anyone has new to this and you get a diagnosis like we have, uh, as far as like facing cancer um we found out over the whole course of this is that each individual is different and every time that you you know how how bad it is and how what kind of treatment they're going to go through everything is is basically like customized yeah. per the individual and we knew like from our last video, the diagnosis and the major surgery that Marianne went through, and we were facing the chemo treatments. And the biggest challenge so far has been the port surgery. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, chemo patients normally have a port put in. Who wants to see it? Yeah. You All can show right. it. All right. You so, see one kind of scar so right there, but disclosure anybody who doesn't want to see it close your eyes now yeah so uh they went in here and then they put in that yeah. so i have a contraption in there 
uh, under my under my skin and a little pocket sewed to my muscles um, and then they call them catheters but basically it's like a tube that goes up and around and down till the basically like a, the arteries and veins in the back of my heart basically yeah, it goes right into the main vein so that when she does get the chemo treatments it goes directly in it's not through an IV it, it doesn't blow out veins it doesn't do things like that so like as what I was saying is the challenge so far like medically and recovery has been the surgery of getting that port in yeah like I felt that my surgery to remove the tumors and the hysterectomy that they gave me and removing my omentum that had tumors in it and scraping the insides for me trying to clean me out um i thought that was going to be rough and it was it was like nothing compared to the support i mean granted the port's supposed to be good for you and everything but it has caused me more pain and anguish than anything in this whole process. <laughs> Not discouraging anybody from getting it, but they did tell me that the reason that I'm having a lot of issues with it is because I'm so slender and that I don't have any fatty tissue to... Um, well, they didn't use the word slender. They said small. So Marianne's 5'2", yeah. 125... 24 yeah. pounds yeah she's small yeah and the reason why i'm saying that is like even you know you're about the size of teenagers there are teenagers yeah. bigger than you yeah um but you know just something to keep in mind when you go to get that port here's where we made the mistake <laughs> yeah. the the major surgery marianne went through like a trooper we were all prepared this is major yeah. surgery the day of the surgery, she was on uh, Percocet for a day. She, they got weaned off of that. Then she was on Tylenol. And we stayed on Tylenol every six hours for about a week yeah. to manage and stay on top of the pain. Yeah. Okay. Port surgery. She went in. I don't even know if at the hospital they gave you anything for pain. They did not. Okay. Not while I was awake unless they did something while I was out. Right. And by that time, Marianne was already off the Tylenol from the major surgery. For a couple weeks. Right. Couple so weeks. we came home from there. She was feeling pretty decent after the surgery. Yeah, it was later it in was the day. It was just a twilight thing. So as far as like recovering from anesthetic or whatever, she, she was doing fine. Yeah, it was outpatient. I didn't have to stay in the hospital yeah. or anything. I went in um, midday and then... Uh, we got home around six thirty, seven o'clock that night. The longest part of it was waiting because after the surgery, they took an x-ray to make sure everything was in place and everything was working okay. And we had to wait on the uh, radiology report to come back saying, go ahead, you can go home. Mm -hmm. So we had no Tylenol or no painkillers that night. And then... Yeah, and I wasn't feeling horrible after when I came home that night. And I went to bed not long after that. Right. So we woke up. Well, you woke up the next Tuesday morning, morning. Tuesday morning. Yeah. And it was like. I got hit by a train. A truck hit. I her. couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. Like even like an eighth of an inch. Without drastic pain. Uh, and my neck wouldn't move. I couldn't turn my neck at all. I couldn't move my arm. My arm didn't go anywhere. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like paralyzed. Yeah. It was terrible. So. But but it was, I knew I wasn't paralyzed because I could feel the pain. So yeah. I knew like stuff was there. Um, it wasn't that I couldn't feel it. So immediately we got back it. on the regimen of Tylenol, which yeah. takes a few days to kind of like whatever mellow out, but. It Mary kind of didn't ended up take... taking the edge off. I didn't want to take... The only thing that they prescribed me for this surgery was oxycodone. And I did not want to take it because I don't do well with medication, as we know. Um, and so I didn't want to 
jump right into that. So I yeah, stuck with because that Tylenol. causes worse side effects. Yeah. Uh, and we were so that was a Tuesday. Thursday she was going in for the first round. So of chemo treatments, yeah. Yeah. There was concern. We do. We wanted to kind of get the pain manageable so she could go through the first round and then, you know, whatever. Uh, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, we were doing the Tylenol. It was yeah. taking the edge off, but I really still couldn't move my neck or anything too much. It, it was hurt. so bad that Tuesday morning, like I had to lift her up out of bed. Like, yeah, it, it was, was. You man, know those. You know through. those movies like. Um, the horror movies where like the people's bodies like bend over in the opposite direction yeah. of what they're supposed to and they start walking on their arms. Uh, that's kind of what happened because uh, I couldn't get out of bed and I was having a little bit of trouble with uh, still, I not that I do, but I, I mean, they cut my whole abdomen open. So it still was a little bit difficult for me getting out of bed in the first sitting place up, to up. sit up to get out of bed. Although you're doing better. I am doing better today. now. Um, it's like the first day in yeah. almost six and a half weeks, almost six weeks. I don't remember yeah. how long. But anyways, I had been able to, uh, for a couple weeks then, been able to pull myself up, you know. But I had been using my arms to brace myself as I pushed myself up off the bed. But from laying in a flat position, and this whole time she's been sleeping on her back, I have to give the strong arm that you can grab onto and, yeah. and kind of hoist you yeah. up because but the problem, she just doesn't have the muscle strength in her stomach. Yeah. So. The problem on Tuesday when I got up was I couldn't move my neck or head or anything, and I couldn't move this arm. So I was using this arm to like lift my head off the pillow, and then this arm it was useless. So I couldn't like grab onto him to help him pull me up. So he's just like pulling me up using all his like upper body strength, but he had hurt his hand the week before. Yeah. And so I was Which literally I think was in the video. I hurt my, yeah. I was and literally I didn't have the brace on. It was first thing in the morning. Like you just woke me yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So Tuesday morning. Okay. That's enough of that. Tuesday no, morning was bad. But it was cool okay, getting out of the bed. Like, um, so finally <laughs> he's like, let me move your legs over the edge of the bed first. And then I'll see if I can like pull the rest of you up. So like my body like bent over backwards and I can feel my incision from my first surgery of my abdomen pulling. And then like everything on top was pulling and I couldn't move my head. I literally swear if there was a video of that, it would look like those, those creepy, weird, dead creatures that are in those horror movies. Yeah. So that was kind of a... That was an interesting morning. Well, yeah. interesting day, actually. Yeah. Day, day, day and a half. Um, yeah. Just the worst getting out of bed experience of my life. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we seem to kind of get that under c control yeah. somewhat. Yeah. Um, we but figured it out. Marianne's been experiencing pains like throughout. It's been moving, coming, going, that kind of thing. So we got back on a Tylenol and we're hoping that would take care of it. Which brought us to Thursday of that day, which was the first chemo treatment. Chemo treatment. First of six. Yes. So, that started out being, you know, I'm the type of guy that if I don't know what's going on, I'm like very nervous, I'm on edge, I'm anxiety, everything. I, I don't like going into new situations without knowing what's going on. And, and with the first treatment, the first part of it, we were supposed to meet with the doctor to go over what to expect and how it was going to work and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And I think, I mean, just me personally, you correct me if I'm wrong, besides which you could talk about the reaction. But if mm -hmm. it wasn't for the reaction that you had, I think that day was worse on me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Because, like, I'm just thinking... Oh, what's, what's tonight going to be like, you know, because like I said at the beginning of this video, it's different with each individual person. Yeah. Marianne, again, is so small, knowing what she went through with the major surgery and those chemicals, knowing she's getting all these chemicals getting pumped back in her again, like what's it going to be like that night? So we went through the meeting and uh, thankfully Joanne was with us too. And I just said, 
I just got to go and get the house ready and go grocery shopping and just go deal with stuff. Yeah, because it was, I was having treatments for five hours. So, yeah. you know, and they weren't allowed to come back because the area, they have it like, it's a really small area. There's, a, they have like these little cubicles that you sit in and there is space enough in there for like the monitor and the chair that you sit in. And they even put the chemical bag poles like out in the aisle. Like there's not enough room in there. Yeah, so it's pretty you small. can't have anybody really back there with you. <clears throat> um, but anyways, we went in, um, we had the meeting with, well, we went in and they, I went in first to get the attachment on my port for them to put the chemicals into. But you said that was a little bit. That was a little bit rough, but I I've put it to the fact that it was only a couple of days that I had had the surgery to put it in. So the like tissue wasn't repaired. Like it was still like really tender, very tender. Yeah. So that was a little rough, but I managed through that. Not, not a problem. We went in, we talked with the doctor. I told the doctor about how I couldn't move my neck or my arm. And so he went around and he started feeling like my shoulder area and he's like, oh my gosh, it is hard as a rock. Yeah, her muscles you, were just... He's like, your muscles are seized up in your neck. That's your problem. So um, he did a, he did send me a script for a muscle relaxer, which I did take a couple of times, but then I thought it was causing me other problems, so I stopped taking it. I kind of don't know if it was or wasn't the cause of it but we'll we'll get to that yeah so talk about the chemo treatment so i went back for the treatment they gave me this whole stack of like informational things that they had on all the drugs they were going to give me and so like they started me out with um like a liquid Benadryl and saline, I think, and some, something else for nausea. And so they started giving me all of those medications first so that my body kind of gets prepared for the drugs, which I think is really good because Very it good. helped a lot. Very good. Um, yeah. So then they gave me the first drug and that was going fine. And then they came in and they said, Okay, we're gonna give you this drug now. This is the one that you know some people are allergic to. Not a lot of people, but enough people. And these are the symptoms of the reactions if you're allergic to it. And they start listing all these things that could you know be potential reactions. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, but we don't expect anything, you know. So they. Um, so time wise, this was this this past Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, so this... Yeah. Yeah, okay. And today so is Wednesday. So it'll be Wednesday. a week tomorrow. It'll be a week tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they start, you know, dripping that IV into me. And, you know, they walk away and they came back and um, kept on checking on me. And so, like, the nurse literally came by and said, so how's it going? Everything going okay? And I'm like, so far so good. And she's like, oh, that's great. You know, she walked away and like within 10 to 12 seconds, every single reaction symptom that they said could happen, happened. I went into anaphylaxis and I was like, I was out. Like I felt like my whole chest filled, filled up with being really warm all of a sudden. And then like my heart felt heavy. And then I felt like constriction in my chest and, um, so I, I started waving at the nurse and she like, we have a reaction. And I swear everyone in that facility came to my cubicle, which is like big enough for a recliner chair. So they're like a whole arch of nurses, at least six nurses. The doctor was there. They started giving me something, you know, to counteract it. They unhooked it. They started giving me something to counteract it. And then like, while they were doing that, I got the last symptom, which was like excruciating pain in your lower back. So then they like, uh, shot me up with Demerol to like s kill that. And then that started to subside, but then it moved up my back. So it was then like in the middle of my back, that excruciating pain. And so they shot me up with another thing of Demerol. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I just feel kind of swimmy. <laughs> yeah, you were definitely high. I was, yeah, it was, yeah. that was crazy. Um, 
and like I, I felt constriction like in my chest, like I could, you know, I, I could breathe, but I felt like I couldn't, you know. And uh, so it turned out that that I, I'm pretty sure that the bag of that stuff was a thousand cc's. Um, and she told me, well, I, she didn't tell me, I heard her tell the doctor, it's only been two cc's. So like I had that strong reaction of all the things that could go wrong um, for right a symptom away. of that. I had it pretty quickly. I had it within two cc's. And so that's, that's just crazy to me that that little bit caused me such, my whole body just went into distress. And, and I remember the, the nurse came by another, one of the nurses, because there was like six of them, like I said, one of them came by to check on my one of my meds later. Um, and she's like, you look much better now. Your chest was so red and your face was so... <laughs> yeah. So then they got you like straightened up yeah, again. Yeah, they gave and then me gave a little. You the third one because she's supposed to have yeah. three different chemicals. Yeah, they did give my body a little trials, bit of time so. to um, calm down and and come back from the distress that it okay had been with in. The third one. And then I did well with yeah. the third one. So the first one and the third one, I was fine. I am clearly allergic to the second, and I can never have that drug again for good reason. Um, but now they have to find a replacement for that. Um, they did suggest to me that the replacement that they think that they'll use, and, and I I don't know, but they think um, that they're going to give me this other one that is chemically the same as the one they gave me, except for they don't put tree bark oil in it. So maybe I'm allergic to tree bark oil. I have no idea, but I know I can't have that one drug. So we'll find out on the 12th. That's yes. when you go back for the Yeah, the next, next treatment's treatment. on the 12th. So through this whole thing, uh, the whole time, uh, the three of us are texting back and forth. Marianne had her phone, and you could just tell when the text got a little wonky that she was like... <laughs> Uh, Slightly know, drugged. The spell checking wasn't working and she was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, some but of the words, I can't believe that down. you guys even knew what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, so, um, so we got, you got done with that and you got back home. Yeah, I was So that day, that. the day you came home, you were, you had an appetite, there mm -hmm. was no nausea, which is what we were worried about. Yeah, because um, they say you can get really nauseous. They know, even nauseous, prescribed vomiting. me two different nausea medications, one for instantaneous and one for prolonged. Yeah. You had your appetite, you ate really good that day, um, and, uh, you know, it was doing fine that night, and then the Friday kind of started the whole... Yeah, Friday Weird night. Weird stuff. And symptoms from chemotherapy can last... At all, least a week or Yeah, more. at least yeah. a week after the treatment. And it's always something different. And it's always whatever. Marion's concerned about the port. So, you know, Friday started the whole, like, is it a reaction to the chemo? Is there a problem with the port? Here's the pain. Here's, you know. Yeah, because I also started <sighs> having like a pinching well, sensation a inside where the inside my shoulder where the port is of like inside my body. Like I knew it wasn't in the port, but it felt like it inside the body. Then at four thirty in the morning, Friday night into Saturday, I woke up and I had like this heaviness in and pain in my chest and I thought oh my gosh my heart is like being crushed right now and I was like oh my goodness and I actually woke Sean up after about a half hour <laughs> he was mad at me because I didn't wake him up sooner but I was like something's wrong I don't know what to do um and I just felt this heaviness after about an hour and a half it went away well we got you up and got you in a chair and I got you um some warm root beer yeah um, just to see if it, like, if you burped real hard, if it, cause it kind of, the way yeah. she was describing it, it almost sounded like heartburn, yeah. which is one of the side effects of the chemo, yeah. um, uh, which could be, so I got you up in chair, got you the warm root beer. You did belch did. a little bit. Yeah. I kind of relieved it a little bit. So like, okay, is it like, did something go wrong with the port? Is she having a heart attack? Does it heartburn? Like what, what? All these different things, like, 
it's that's the hard part of this. I mean, yeah. Now that you're through the first round and we kind of know this is what could happen, we could be prepared better. Um, yeah. So, which is the rough part of this. And this is kind of why we're making these videos because if anybody has to go through this, just maybe it'll help you to know what yeah, could just happen. Be prepared and it's okay. for the not knowing, but kind of like. Be cautious too, because yeah. this leads to like Saturday and yeah. Sunday, so which is Saturday. What we're talking about. Saturday, I, um, I was kind of okay during the day. I still couldn't move much. My neck still hurt, you know that kind of stuff. My shoulder, um, and then Saturday night into Sunday morning, like I woke up again at about four thirty again, and I woke up and this time under my port inside my body every time I would breathe I would feel like there was a needle going into me and that lasted for about 15 minutes and then that went away um and then I just kind of had like some pain in my back um right along almost the spine just kind of to the right of my spine um and I just when felt did Kayla like come? Did she, come she came on Thursday, Thursday after yeah. the treatment. Yeah. So our, our, uh, well, it's both of our sister. Yeah. Us. Um, Kayla, uh, she came over and gave, um, Marianne, a, a little a bit of a neck massage, massage on her neck to and some exercise because, ball. um, she's a, is a physical therapist. Yeah. She is the, her actual title. Uh, yeah. I don't know, but that's what she does for a living. So she came over to kind of loosen that yeah. up a little bit. Um, we were putting the. Uh, I I use Biofreeze. Like if I could take a bath in it, it'd be awesome. But I was putting that on her neck, and we have a heating pad and stuff, and just trying to get that knot out. So again, we're kind of dealing with multiple things here at the same time. Yeah, and I'm like, <clears throat> I don't even know which doctor to call. Right. Is it is it complications from the port surgery? Is it the port itself that may have moved? Is it side effects from the chemotherapy? Is it, you know, what what's going on? <laughs> like, what, what do we do um, to do this? And again, thankfully for, you know, Kayla and Joanne, because like, that's a resource. We, what do you think we should do? Who should we call? That kind of thing. But Sunday, it got like really scary and really bad and finally Marianne called the surgeon who put the port in yeah and uh, try to get him on the phone explain what's going on that kind of thing yeah so I called him and he set me up for a chest x-ray just to make sure that at the time he told me to make sure that everything was still in the place it needed to be um, but we would find out later that he thought that maybe I had um, a collapsed lung. collapsed lung or something else that happened post post surgery um, a little bit later than the chest x-ray that they had put when I was in the hospital getting the port they did a chest x-ray then so um, set me up for a chest x-ray the next day so I went in for the chest x-ray that was Monday 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 mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> this is what's kind of cool in our area I'm sure it's the same anywhere around the country um, but uh, Marianne's now on this thing called my chart so <clears throat> we went to a facility to get the x-ray done and like immediately he was able to see it and he made notes on it you know like I'm assuming that if he would have saw something right yeah, away he would have called and said like, get over here get now. over the emergency and that kind of thing because I was I was thinking like okay so we went and got the th and then it was like another day before we went in for the follow-up with him it's like really we waited that long but he actually saw within minutes minutes because by the, the time we got home yeah. there was already a thing in my my chart saying you know he here's saw the, the results yeah yeah so that kind of uh and then uh tuesday we went and you could your follow-up post-op follow-up was just moved up a little it bit. was moved up a week because i was supposed yeah. to go next week for my with the port, follow. there there are risks. There's there's risks for infection. There's risks for it moving. There's risk for it breaking. There's 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 risks involved with that. You think, oh, they're just going to put something in and it'll just make it easier. But there yeah. are risks, especially with her body size. Yeah. yeah. So 
there was concern, she was concerned, and when she gets concerned, I get concerned. Yeah. And I'm but like, I was concerned yeah. because of all the heavy pressure and pain in my chest and then the pain breathing. Like the rest of the pain, I'm like, okay, not being able to turn my head and move my arm, that's muscular. Like I get that. Um, I'm sure it'll go better over time. And it has gotten better. It's not like perfect yet, but it has gotten better. But when you start feeling those other things, it's concerning. Yeah. Yeah, so. <sighs> but luckily, um, that seems to be diminishing. Um, Today's a pretty, pretty Today's decent been a day. pretty good day. She's got her appetite. Um, I did get last some Last night, nights. she actually asked for more food, yeah. which was nice. I did um, get some night sweats again. Yeah. Um, the last couple of days. Did you do okay with that last night? Uh, yeah, I wasn't as soppy. Yeah. But I woke up hot, but I wasn't, like, covered in liquid. <laughs> so the next round, when she goes for the next round of chemo, the port will already, already be in place, and that'll be in the past, so we could take that off. Yeah. You know, thankfully, they waited. <laughs> they waited a few weeks after the major surgery yeah. to do the port surgery to do the chemo, because if we would have had all that combined, you now we're talking with dealing with five different doctors at the same time, different things. Akron, Youngstown, oh, it would have been yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that I could have handled both at the same time. Because, no. like, even now, like, some... some well, all of the chemo medications cause um, either constipation or diarrhea. And I definitely got the constipation part. Bad. And it was horrible and very painful. And, like, I was afraid that my incision was going to rip open down there. Even though, like, I know it's, it's pretty healed. It's been six weeks. But, like... My, I thought my insides were just going to burst, like, and it just felt like everything was pushing and pulling and Yeah, which just, mentally uh, caused her not to eat as much because she was worried about eating and, yeah, but you, so, you ate pretty good this morning, so yeah, we're, yeah. we're back on Yeah, today I feel track, like I'm so. back on the road to recovery, whereas the last, like, four days, I didn't know I was, yeah. I didn't think I was going to make it. A little bit rough. Yeah. But it was it was pretty so if you are traumatic. going through this husbands and wives either or um i guess the bottom line is expect the unexpected because you know just kind of be prepared don't be afraid to reach out to the doctors that's what they're there for yeah and, and i was afraid to reach out because i thought he was going <clears> to <throat> think i was crazy because like how could you be you know in this much pain yet and granted i refused to take the oxycontin yeah but uh, I think the conversation that you had with the nurse practitioner, we were both bawling because she came out and said, look. Yeah, he, the port doctor had a nurse practitioner yeah. that came in to see me before he came in yesterday. She made the statement and said, look, you guys are both going through a lot. It's, it's justifiable to be concerned, to be worried. Uh, Marianne's body is going through a lot of trauma. And in a short period of time, the is what anxiety she said. and the stress and and worrying about all that stuff, it's it's normal, it's okay. I mean, we looked at the we looked at the X ray medically. You're fine, and I think that was a change for both of us actually to kind of say, okay, this is just how it's going to be. Let's get back on the Tylenol. Let's, you know, yeah. back on nutrition. We could deal with the little bumps and pains and 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 things like that and. That was like a, a turning point. Plus, you being able to go to the bathroom was nice too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, we always had it's a, funny. My had sister, a parade. Da, 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 yeah, da, it's, da, it's da, funny because my I like texted my sister. You know, I went, and she's like, "So, forty-seven is the age when we get excited about whether we can go poop or not." I'm like, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, because it was Thursday since Thursday. Well, well Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, almost a week. Yeah. A week. Yeah. And trying to go. So hurt so much inside. Yeah. Yeah. But. <sighs> okay. So, uh, Donnie Cove, <laughs> um, 
There are some things that need to be done. I there have are. A, I have uh, some projects sitting over there waiting. Maybe we'll get over there a little bit this weekend because it's supposed to be nice and no rain and a little bit warmer. And I should be doing much better by then because I'm feeling so much better today. Marianne can get out today. and get some exercise. She's not going to be doing any work, but she could go out and sit. And I bought her a nice little pop-up tent to yeah, protect her from the sun. Apparently with chemo, you're not allowed to be in the sun without wearing sunscreen. Yeah. Um, so we could get some stuff done over there and have some more content for you. We're not shutting down yet for the summer. Yeah, we um, still have a few more few weeks more, of few more things and stuff looks we like we're gonna done. have some nice weather and uh so we'll get back on that. Um but uh if you guys are enjoying this series, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're up to seventy subscribers. I'm not sure they enjoy this series of my illness, but Well, it's part of it, that's what I said. <laughs> and maybe this will help somebody that yeah. know that there's other people out there going through yeah. it. Um but uh, the series of Donnelly Cove and our retreat life, so to speak, I guess. Uh, we're also on Instagram. You can go to, uh, uh, there's a link down in the description, or you can search for Donnelly Cove. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add um, to this video? Just, just that, like, the first couple of days when I was, like, really in pain before I went to the chemo, um, I did reach out to a couple of other people who have had ports or have ports now um, that I know and they all told me it's fine you know it's gonna be really painful for at least four or five days so I knew going into that that it was gonna be at least four or five days and I should calm myself down and I did for the first couple of days then uh, but then when it was getting longer than that and it wasn't getting any better and I was getting all those extra pains, then I started to freak out a little bit. Yeah. But when you do, just call your doctor. Cause, yeah. And again, you know, they did prescribe uh, pain meds that she elected to not take. Yeah. Too. So yeah. if you were on those, you probably wouldn't have these pains. Probably. And we kind of dropped off of the Tylenol a little bit due to the, you know, constipation and, and trying to get that and yeah anyways <sighs> okay but hey good. check out our hauntedtravels.com as well and hey till next time thanks for watching and happy hunting